Wrigley's Spearmint Gum presents The Howard Miller Show. And now here with music on record is Howard Miller. Well, thank you very much, Joe Lovable. That was Eddie Joyce referring to me. I'm Howard Miller for the Wrigley Spearman Gum Folk. And today we've got a real exciting show for you. We're going to visit the home of Mr. and Mrs. Marty Melcher out in Burbank, California. Now, with all due respects to Mr. Marty Melcher, I think probably it would be a little more clear to you if I told you that that was Miss Doris Day. You're going to have a chance to meet this queen gal of all the girl singers in this great nation of ours in just a very few minutes because there in front of her breakfast table and our CBS microphones, Doris and Marty are waiting to say hello to all the nation. Let's begin, however, today, as always, by playing a phonograph record that has very little to do with Doris Day, but it has considerable to do with Mr. Frank Sinatra. It's another good hit for him. It's called Same Old Saturday Night. <laughs> Went to see a movie show Found myself an empty row Thought the show was just all right Same old Saturday night Then I made the usual stop Coffee at the coffee shop Friendly face nowhere inside Same old Saturday night I really thought the papers I bought would help me forget you for a while. Believe me, honey, the funnies weren't funny. They didn't even make me smile. How I wish you'd lift the phone. Fun is fun, but not alone. Till you let me hold you tight. Same old Saturday night. I bought would help me forget you for a while, but believe me, honey, the funnies weren't funny, they didn't even make me smile, now I wish you'd lift that phone, fun is fun, but not alone, till you let me hold you tight, same old Saturday night. Same old Saturday night, Mr. Frank Sinatra. One of these days, we're going to have to uh, deviate from our usual custom and present stars and just uh, refer to a lot of mail that we've been receiving on this show because you people have been just so wonderfully generous in your praise of some of the things that we've tried to do and, more important, about our sponsor's product, Wrigley Spearman Chewing Gum. And we'd like to spend a whole 15 minutes thanking you for it. For instance, I had a very cute letter in the mailbag this morning from a, a grandma who said, Dear Mr. Miller, just a note of thanks to all the people at the Wrigley Chewing Gum Place who make it possible to give us these 15 fabulous minutes with you and the wonderful stars that you present. Here's something I thought you might get a bang out of. Yesterday was my little boy's, my little grandson's birthday, and the shirt in one of the packages that we presented to him was wrapped beautifully, as were all the gifts, but in the center of the bow that I tied, I fixed up a package of Wrigley Spearman Chewing Gum. He tore off the ribbon, looked at the shirt, and then said, Oh... And then with his little fat fist, he clutched the gum and ran off and beamed from ear to ear. Well, you know, that's not a surprise. You'll find that youngsters just love Wrigley Spearman chewing gum. It's refreshing. You find it so, too, of course. And it's good for the youngsters. Instead of so many other things that they might pick and nosh on during the course of the day, why don't you let them satisfy their little selves and their little craving with a wonderful stick of delicious, refreshing, and wholesome Wrigley Spearman chewing gum. They'll like it. You will, too, Mother. Well, let's hurry out now to Burbank, California. We're waiting there, as we said before, at the breakfast table, because, of course, it's awful early in the morning in California. 
is Miss Doris Day. Doris, good morning. Hi, Howard. How are you today? Just wonderful, dear. How's everything out in California? Oh, it's not very sunny, but it's warm. How's that big, good-looking husband of yours, Mr. Marty Melcher? Oh, he's good-looking. Did you feed him breakfast? <laughs> he doesn't eat breakfast, but we're all having coffee. Marty and George Foster Our and engineer. myself. Oh, well, wonderful. That must be a real sitting room setting. Oh, yeah. Doris, uh, what's the weather situation out in California these days? Well, you know, we had a terrific hot spell. Yes, I know. But uh, it's fine now, and I think that we're going into fall, Howard. Well, how can you tell in California? Being an old Middle Westerner, we know when the leaves start falling and things get brownish and uh, we start expecting some nip in the air and some snow. Oh, there's a nip in the air. Is there in California? Sure, a little one, but there's a nip. What happens to the <laughs> What happens to the foliage? Uh, it, it doesn't drop off the trees. No, no, it doesn't. So, Marty, do, you don't have to stay to say to Marty, go on, rake the leaves, son. No. That never happened. No, but I'll tell you what I did. I put away my summer clothes, so it better stay cool. Well, is there a big wardrobe uh, change necessary in California? Well, it's not as big as you have back there, you know, but uh, I do put away my cotton uh, pants and, and my long pants, that is, uh-huh. and uh, the T-shirts and things like that, you know. Yeah, and you start putting on uh, the little dressmaker suits and those cute little and things, the, huh? Uh-huh, and the wool skirts and sweaters and things, you know. Yeah, I've, but always, not... I've always dreamed that this must be a, an ideal situation to save money, not having to buy all these winter overcoats, fur coats, and things of that sort. Oh, it is, my dear. I imagine it, it is. is. Of course, for that start... does... That doesn't go for first souls, though. No, I suppose not, and particularly in your life, Doris, because necessarily you have to travel uh, into other climes, although you don't do a lot of personal appearances, do you? You content yourself with the Hollywood setting and with movies. Well, I'm so busy in pictures, uh, yes. Howard, that I don't have much time in between, you I know. know. Now, you've just finished, of course, a wonderful picture. The The picture closed downtown here, and it's out in the neighborhoods now. This great Ruth Edding story that you made, Love Me or Leave Me, that must have been a, a thrill for you to do that picture, wasn't it, Doris? Oh, it was just fantastic, Howard. It was the most fun I've ever had. You know, a very interesting thing. I do this two-hour television show on Friday night on uh, CBS here in Chicago. Uh-huh. And on last Friday night, one of uh, the gentlemen sitting in the audience, and they didn't tell me about it until after, was the gimp. No! Yes, he lives here in Chicago, and I understand he, he watches our show every Friday, and he sent for tickets and came down with his party of friends, and I didn't get a chance to meet him. I'm sorry I didn't. Oh, I wish you had. I, I wish that I would have had a chance to. Now, Doris, what about uh, the movies for you? What's the next uh, starring role? Well, I'm going to do The Quality of Mercy. It... That's the Robert Carson book. I don't know if you've read it or not. No, it's... I have not read it, but I, I uh, saw the program notes on it, or at least the scenario notes on it in one of the magazines. But I'm wondering how they'll introduce music into the score, or will, won't they have music? Well, in the book, the girl was an extra in pictures. But in the uh, screenplay, I will be a singer in a little club. So you'll get a chance to do a little bit of singing. Uh-huh. Now, Three Doris, where did the fabulous career of Doris Day actually begin? I know it was a trick of circumstance that changed a dancer to a singer, and that was your lot in life, wasn't it? Yes. You know, every time I start talking about this, I get hysterical. My husband has heard it so many times. I know that he must have. No, I started as a dancer, Howard, when I was about six, as a matter of fact. And then when I was 15, I broke my leg, as you know. And weren't you in an automobile accident going yes. someplace to perform as a dancer? No, uh, I, I wasn't performing that night, but I was in a car. I see. And uh, a train hit us. Uh-huh. And um, so I landed in the hospital for about 14 months. And it made dancing impossible from that date forward? Well, I can dance now, you know, but um, it was a little rough at that time. My leg was very weak uh-huh. for quite a while after, so I studied voice then. And then from the one facet of the art to the other, of course, you reached the great zenith of stardom. Now, of course, it embraces wonderful Columbia records and motion pictures, practically everything that you wanted to do in the world of the arts. You've certainly accomplished and wonderfully well, Doris. Thank you, Howard. It's been a, a great life and to a most deserving person. We're uh, very enamored, and I know all the public is, of your late record for Columbia, which is soaring up to the top. It's, of course, a tremendous hit for you. I'll Never Stop Loving You, which, of course, is from the score of uh, Love Me or Leave Me. Do you mind if we play it? I'd love it. Let's play it for the world. Miss Doris Day with I'll Never Stop Loving You. Loving you, whatever else I may do, my love for you will live till time itself is through. I'll never stop wanting you, and when. 
forever is through my heart will be the way it does each time we meet the night doesn't question the stars that appear in the skies so why Should I question the stars that in my eyes? Of this I'm more than just sure. My love will last and endure. I'll never know. Wonderful record, Doris and World. That's I'll Never Stop Loving You, Miss Doris Day. Doris, how soon you and Marty going to come back out here and take another boat ride with me? Oh, we'd like to come tomorrow. You know, I was looking through a scrapbook of pictures that I have and that I'm so very proud of, and there's some swell pictures of you and Marty diving in off the stern of the boat, swimming around out in the uh, great cool waters of Lake Michigan. Cool? <laughs> it was about 40. <laughs> I won't say it was cold, but you turned <laughs> off a <of> blue. <laughs> Doris, you're just as gracious as you always are for uh, being on our show this morning. I do appreciate it. I know the Wrigley people do, too. I love being on the show, and I want to be on it again. Thank you very, oh, Howard, very much. Yes, sir. Howard, before we sign off, Marty just said that he wants you to send him some Wrigley Spearmint. All right, put Marty on and make him uh, let him make his own request. I want to hear your husband's voice again anyway. It booms. We love Wrigley Spearmint, you know. Do, do you? That's... Oh, mad about it. Now, hold on. Here he comes. He wants to say hi. All right. All right. Hi, Marty. How are you? My wife does all the talking in public and in private. <laughs> 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 Marty, I, I was just saying to, I was just saying to Doris, Marty, I don't know if you had the earphones on or not. I wish you kids would come out and take another boat ride before I put the boat up for the winter. Well, we may come east uh, very soon, and we might have a business trip to Chicago in the next month. So if we surprise you, be ready. All right, I'll keep the boat in the water for another month. You try to get out. Okay. Will you do that? I sure will. Bye, and Howard. I'll cook. All right, dear. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye, Howard. As Wonderful Doris Day, you. thank you. Doris Day and Marty Melcher, Mr. and Mrs. Marty Melcher, two of the sweetest people in show business. You'd love them if you knew them, and I know them pretty well, and I love them. I love Wrigley Spearman chewing gum, too, and you will, too. Why don't you try it? This is Howard Miller from Chicago. You're living doll heads for being here. I want you to meet the quick change artist. He has a 14-month-old baby, Mr. Eddie Joyce. If you've just heard the Howard Miller Show with music on records, brought to you from Chicago by Wrigley's Spearman Gum. Be sure and join Howard Miller tomorrow at the same time when his guest will be Frankie Lester from Sardi's Restaurant in New York. By the way, your wife just called. She wants you to bring home a nickel's worth of neck bones. <laughs> this is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>